there's increasing awareness of the benefits of breastfeeding in Hong Kong. There's a lot of antibodies in the breast milk that you cannot produce from just formula. I really do not want to, you know, give up on um, breastfeeding before six months old. The number of moms breastfeeding their children has risen sharply over the last two decades. However, a lot of the Hong Kong moms have to stop breastfeeding when they return to work. But in Hong Kong, many mothers have no choice but to return to work after 10 weeks of maternity leave for financial reasons. 做嘢同做嘢會相差幾萬蚊㗎啦，都係啊。In this month, Hong Kong Inquirer will look into how difficult it is for working mothers to continue breastfeeding their children after they return to the workplace. Hong Kong is a society where women are viewed as independent, capable, professional, and even after they give birth to babies, they go back to work and support the family financially. That's pretty normal, but it has now become one of the major barriers for working mothers to continue breastfeeding their children until the babies turn six months old. The number of Hong Kong's moms who breastfeed their children have shot up from 19% in 1992 to 84% in 2013, thanks to an increasing amount of promotion from the government as well as NGOs. But the numbers dramatically drop after the mothers leave hospital and before the babies turn six months, the World Health Organization's recommended minimum time to stop breastfeeding. In terms of exclusive breastfeeding rate, namely those who use no milk substitute, Hong Kong rates poorly compared to other places. Exclusive breastfeeding is the best and it kind of, you know, it progressively goes down from there. So we see that the more, the greater uh, amount of formula that's in the infant's diet, the higher the risk of a lot of things like respiratory infections and gastrointestinal infections. Norris Wong is a mother of two. She managed to breastfeed her two children till they were both at least six months old. But it wasn't easy for her at all. Her previous company did not allow her to breastfeed in the office. Gamosangue 在公司的雪櫃裡 but Wong did not give up. She found a breastfeeding room near the company. She would spend 25 minutes going back and forth to the only breastfeeding room in the area every day during lunch break to express her milk. She breastfed her first child until she was two years old, and she continues to breastfeed her second child, who is now 14 months old. 即是他未必一定要給一個地方你去崩。其實這個問題都是解決不到,因為他現在是給我在公司崩。Wong is not the only one who faces this problem with her employer. Many of her friends had to give up breastfeeding their babies either because the companies do not allow it or do not provide adequate facilities. According to the Hong Kong Breastfeeding Mothers Association, about 47% of the companies in Hong Kong do not allow working moms to have two 30-minute lactation breaks during their work time. That's worse than in the Chinese mainland, where the law stipulates that companies must provide working mothers who have kids under one year old to have at least one hour of lactation break during the day in the workplace. Hong Kong does not have such a law in place. About three quarters or 75% of Hong Kong mothers go back to work within about eight to 10 weeks um, postpartum. So, uh, and this for most of them is not a choice. It's, you know, they need to, uh, they have to go back to work for financial reasons. Most workplaces do not support a mother 
to continue breastfeeding, either to have the baby brought into the workplace so she can continue breastfeeding, or even so that she can express her milk um, you know, while she's at work to feed her babies. Only about a quarter of them actually manage to do that. So employment is a big barrier. A lot of our studies show that's one of the strongest uh, risk factors for stopping breastfeeding in Hong Kong is going back to work. And we know that mothers who don't have to go back to work or at least go back to work after the baby is six months old do tend to breastfeed for longer than mothers who go back to work. 可能她可以选择做全职的妈妈的 Alice and Lee Ah Woon is a safety officer at a construction company. She returned to work right after the 10 week maternity leave. Her baby is now five months old, and she expresses her breast milk at this room twice a day during lunch break and tea break. 多一些更好的給小朋友如果爸爸媽媽都一起出來做事 電費方面,以前我們得兩個人的時候可能得三四百元,佔百元左右,今次收到是千五元左右,已經都是第一次收到這個電費單。你們有沒有請工人之類的? 有啊。um, the women that have the biggest challenge are kind of in that middle income group because the lower income mothers maybe don't work. Uh, you know, if the family income is low, that's because the mother is, doesn't work. And so she will stay home so she can breastfeed for longer. The mothers in the higher income families have more flexibility. They either have a better job that they can continue breastfeeding or they have flexibility take, to take an extra two or three months of uh, either vacation or unpaid leave and so in some ways it's kind of v v shape that the higher uh, longer duration of breastfeeding at both ends of the economic spectrum and in the middle it's all the mothers that have to work and and they tend to have the shortest breastfeeding duration Lee is a very lucky mom. Working in a construction company under a manager who understood her need and made an effort to provide her the minimum facilities required is quite something. At present, the Hong Kong government is calling for more companies to provide a working environment that is breastfeeding friendly. Uh, right now, we uh, started with a voluntary uh, way of doing you know, this, uh, this policy, as well as you know, trying to provide advice and also support you know, to these um, you know, employers, rather than you know, having a law. Uh, I think uh, we have to obviously then monitor you know, how it works with our our sort of advice, guidelines, support, uh, and see what is the what what will be the next steps. But to encourage exclusive breastfeeding in Hong Kong, where there's a strong culture here that everyone works extremely hard, just having physical breastfeeding facilities in place doesn't seem enough to help. Corinne Ho Williams is a typical Hong Kong woman who works very hard. The company that she works for provides two breastfeeding rooms. Her employer allows her to work two days out of five working days from home. Mrs. Williams wants to continue to breastfeed her daughter, who just turned six months old. But it was very tough for her to do that. It's so much work and so many meetings during the day. And a lot of those meetings is out of my control. 
I would have probably four or five meetings every day in the office. And also I need to work with other colleagues. So I can't just say, okay, so I have to block this time every day, for example, 3 p.m., like 8, 10 a.m., 3 p.m. to say like no disturb. I cannot do that. So I have to kind of like just follow, like flow with my work schedule. And then if I can find some time to pump, I would pump in the office. But in the past two weeks, I haven't been able to pump at all in the office. Mrs. Williams also suffers from an insufficient supply of breast milk because of work stress, unhealthy diet, and sleeping hours. Quite a few, you know, lactation nurses, consultants, or uh, even like um, breast doctors, they all seem to suggest that um, my ducts are pretty clogged up because of stress. Basically, that's, um, you know, the stress causing your hormones to respond in a non-natural way, even before um, the baby was, uh, uh, was born. As a senior manager, Mrs. Williams represents a lot of the working moms who value their career and they're dedicated to it. Their dilemma in pursuing what they want and given what the baby should have is a difficult one. But Professor Taran said there are things that the government could do. Many of them, if they had a longer paid maternity leave, would choose to stay home. They would choose to be home and they could breastfeed for longer then. But we only have 10 weeks, um, of which usually only eight is after the birth, two weeks is before the birth. So that's not a long time. And, and other studies showed as well that for every week, um, you know, for every week, extra that the mother has in maternity leave, the breastfeeding rates go up. So um, even the difference between going back at eight weeks and 12 weeks makes a difference in breastfeeding. So the longer, the better. So then would the Hong Kong government consider extending the maternity leave? The undersecretary's answer in a nutshell is not now. This would, uh, this would be something more complex than uh, sort of uh, asking the employer to provide bricks for the mother. So this would be a, a really sort of long-term area to look into. Yeah. When I think about my baby, I also think about, you know, what kind of role model I want to set up for her. And I really want her to, you know, appreciate and, um, the, um, the beauty of being independent as a female independent in terms of um, finance and also in terms of your own thinking, so making your decisions um, based on what you think is the best for yourself and also your family. Um, that's why I decided to you know, continue my uh, current job. This is what a lot of Hong Kong moms would resonate with. Extending the statutory maternity leave may be a complex subject, just as the Undersecretary has mentioned. But it's also a very straightforward wish of a lot of Hong Kong moms who want to continue breastfeeding their children. This is Andrea Dan for China Daily.